Stay tuned for the Joan Quinn Profiles. Joan served the state of California as a member on the Arts Council and on the Film Commission. She was formerly on the Architectural Commission and fulfilled two terms on the Fine Arts Commission for the city of Beverly Hills. As an editor for Andy Warhol's Interview Magazine, Condé Nast Publications, and the Hearst Corporation, Joan covered the world of fashion, the mysteries of food, the excitement of theater, and the international art scene. She continues to find people who are on the cutting edge of their professions. Here's Joan Agajanian Quinn. Hi, I'm Joan Agajanian Quinn, and welcome to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here in the Hollywood Museum on Highland Avenue, and we're in the historic Max Factor building. Our guests today are artists Zania Gershman and actress Sharon Sharth. Russian-born Zania Gershman has an international reputation as an artist, starting in St. Petersburg, where she had her first exhibit at the age of 14. She came to America soon after and attended Otis Art Institute. She was one of the youngest students ever admitted. Then she went on to graduate with honors uh, from the school and then earned an MFA at Art Center College of Design. Her work's been exhibited in galleries around the world and Zania continues her work in her West LA studio. So how did art come into your life? Well, actually there's a little evidence of it. <laughs> right, right I know, here. I love this. So um, I, I was 10 years old and I remember a moment, a day, a minute when I was born as an artist. And it actually, uh, kind of meaningful that we are here in a historical Hollywood museum because it was after watching a film uh, called Mephisto, which was so overwhelming. Imagine a 10 year old watching this film about Nazi and artists, and, and it was very complex, and yet it resonated with me. And I was so overwhelmed, I had a feeling that I'm going to explode if I don't do something about it. So I ran to my room, I just almost blindly picked a piece of paper and drew something on paper. And just like a typical artist, the next thing you do, you show, you do an exhibition. This so I showed was it, it, right? So I showed it to my mom, <laughs> and she went, you're an artist. And um, I have never stopped since. That your family has been very supportive, haven't they? Incredible. But did they want you to follow in their footsteps? Because they're more academics, right? Um, and my parents were trained as medical doctors in Soviet Russia. And to be a doctor, you really were kind of a go-to person. You know, no wonder uh, during Stalinism, doctors were arrested because they were the hub of intellectual and right. creative I was, That's what I was thinking. That's why I asked if they wanted you to follow. But even in medical school, they had problems, right? Oh, absolutely. I mean, my, 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 mother, my mother wasn't even accepted to be in school at first because A, she was a woman, okay. and two, she was Jewish, so two evils at once. Um, so it, eventually she was able to go, but it was a difficult time. And so she finished, and your father finished? Yes. And so before I started off from scratch when I came to LA. How did you pick Otis Art Institute? Because I was doing a lot of work with them. I was helping the gallery, work with the gallery, and curating shows there. Well, we came to Los Angeles. We didn't know pretty much anybody, and uh, little by little we started. Uh, first of all, the only thing we brought was one suitcase with a blanket, and one suitcase with my artworks, Is and I had right? nothing else. Um, and we brought the little suitcase, and every single one of my artworks was stamped that this was not art. That was the way I could get it out of the country. Oh, so that wow. could be a conceptual art exhibition wow, in yeah, itself. Exactly. <laughs> and uh, and then I was admitted to right away to the school. Who were your teachers? Because I know Kent Twitchell was teaching there, and he does portraiture. You know, th at the time I was very lucky to overlap with two Toms, Tom Nachtel and Tom Woodall. Oh, Tom Woodall. Yes. Good friend. Wonderful yes. teacher. Yes. Excellent. And then, and then how did you decide then to go to Art Center? Because Art Center was a little different from Otis. It was a little so slicker, took, wasn't it? Yeah, I took a year <laughs> off Otis and uh -huh. actually graduated when I still was in MacArthur Park. Exactly. That's where incredible. And I loved the gallery there. Yeah, it was quite incredible. Took a year off. Um, I wandered around. I knew I wanted to get my master's. I went to see Art Center, and the graduate program is phenomenal. It's different from the undergraduate. Because the other undergraduate is quite different. And, it, the, and the MFA is more art. 
It's MFA you get the studios in the old town Pasadena, oh, right. separate from the building. Right. And it's an old car garage from 1920s. So imagine these brick walls where you imagine these Rolls Royce running in. <laughs> and that's your studio. And every student got their own studio. So all the master's uh, students got studios? We, every single one and of us And who would come studio. around and watch your paint? We had the, the mafia of the six advisors. <laughs> And they were the top in the field. Uh, it was um, Lita Albuquerque. Oh, really? Um, 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 you know, just the t the top of the top. Uh, Jeremy Gilbert Rolf. Oh, fabulous! Uh, um, um, All our old friends. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, it's so they were critiquing because Jeremy was critiquing, and and Lita was Mike probably Kelly. Mike, who's Mike gone, Kelly, had a, yeah, yeah. has a wonderful show in New York at Hauser Worth that I saw the other mm -hmm. day, which he must have made during that time. Because they were things that, from his memory, like you're talking mm -hmm. about memory, finding things at thrift shops and at, at fairs and making art out of it. And during that period, funny you should bring up memory, I did my uh, body of work that had to do with family inheritance and memory. Yeah, that's what I was thinking because yep. I knew you had done that. What other artists inspired you? Well, uh, there's a big there's a big gap uh, because I go straight to Rembrandt. <laughs> oh, oh, you from from Lita Albuquerque to Rembrandt. <laughs> exactly. Well, she kind of might make that journey with yes. her Egyptian things. <laughs> uh, and and then we st drive straight to Egypt to Fayum portraits. And then we go. Oh, is that right? Yes. That uh, is so that I, is there's there's actually even though it doesn't seem like it, it's all connecting, isn't it? It's a spiral. It's like the, yeah. the, the, the Tesla spiral. And, and one of the things that, we were, that I wanted to ask you about was the piece in Chile, because you have something in the museum there. Do we have a picture of it? Uh, yes, we do. Oh, we, we didn't catalog. have to bring it. But tell me what um, it was. Uh, it's a portrait that's part of my series that's called Larger Than Life. Mm. And the larger than life to me, of course, it's, a, it's an oxymoron because nothing is larger than life. Life is <laughs> pretty large. Big, yeah. So um, what can be? Well, in a way, art can be larger, larger than life. Um, but then there's a play on the words because these portraits are literally larger than life size. They're gigantic. Oh, and that's what went to Chile? And there's a How big? Ten feet? Of, it's, about, it's about maybe a five by seven foot portrait. It's larger than a... As, but it's the face, so it's pressed against the surface, right, looking right out at you. Um, so when you stand in front of it, you feel really tiny uh, compared to this overpowering You um, talked about... And, and how do you get... I have a... Um, picture of one of these, the top one. Yes. Is this one larger than life? Yes, this is about seven feet tall, a uh, portrait of Jack Nicholson. Just his head Just is his seven head. feet. Just his head, yes. And, and of course, he didn't sit for it, did he? Well, the interesting part, I used uh, some of the true, these iconic faces that I felt were important to me growing up, oh. both in Russia and in America. And I felt that they kind of melded in my memory almost between the family photos. Because you have to remember, don't you, every detail of that person when you're painting them. Exactly, but they, they, you, it's hard to separate them from your everyday life. Like here they are in the films, again, perfect that we're in the Hollywood Museum. Here they are as an <laughs> icon for, for film, but then you watch them with your grandfather, and perhaps their oh, features right. start melding right. with the features right. of that memory. So you think that's what happens? So that's the portrait where, where it's really, I mean, in some ways, it's Jack Nicholson, but it's a self-portrait. It's a biographical piece of how we relate to iconic faces. I always think that the artist puts a piece of himself or herself into each painting anyway, if you're yeah. doing it with your hand, because that's part of it. What's the one on the bottom? The bottom is uh, Clint Eastwood, and uh, that painting is also, you know, I mean, it's larger than, than my height. Um, and it was a funny story because I painted it when I had a cold. <laughs> and when you see, he's not very happy. He's not, he has a little cold. <laughs> so. So, so you were talking about the, the, the life cycle, and you did a, a series on your grandmother. Well, this is really, truly remarkable because my grandmother, whom I was named after, so I'm Zhenya, her name is Zhenya, uh, was a true muse. My grandfather, who was uh, uh, one of the most famous poets uh, in Russia. Oh, that's what you were saying. And, and, and some of his work is...
translated into Armenian. Absolutely. <laughs> and and everything that he wrote was dedicated to was my about grandma. Was your grandma? When he passed away and we left for this country, my grandmother shortly after joined us and she became my muse. So she sat for you? She sat for me for about t a period of 15 years. Wow. And she allowed me to watch her age and to reflect on what happens to a woman aging. That's fantastic. And she, she would always say, you know, she would look at the portrait and say, I hate it. <laughs> and then she said, I would hate what I look like, but I love it. Because it's a pain So she had to go through that. That's how I feel, too. When I see yeah. something, it's like, you don't think you look like that, right. but it's a great piece of art. Yeah, so she would always say, I hate it, but I love it. Yeah. <laughs> Um, one of the other things that we talked about and, and that I know you're an educator at the Getty. Correct. And what do you do there? So I worked there for 12 years. I used to uh, lead the education program for adults. Oh, you And did. now I bring, uh, through my nonprofit, I bring groups to various museums. But what did you teach? I taught about art appreciation and art making. I taught various techniques, painting, drawing, sculpting. But I also, I feel that the art making continues into the galleries. And when we look at the works of art and we appreciate them, we're actually repainting them. We're recreating in the works mind, of art. In your mind, aren't you? That's great. And not only in your mind, but physically, you're almost making, you know, if you believe in quantum physics, <laughs> you physically, <laughs> you're around, you're right. physically shifting these molecules depending on how you're perceiving that object. Well, before, before we leave, tell me about the book you're writing because that's kind of, in keeping with the, the Getty, in a way, Secrets Correct. of the Masters? Co correct. <laughs> I'm looking at the work of the old masters from Renaissance to Baroque, and some of the inspiration they drew from various secret societies, uh, such as uh, Rosicrucianism, Templar Knights, oh. uh, uh, early Freemasonry, and also oh. Jewish mysticism, Kabbalah, and how they use the symbols for inspiration and creating art as talismanic objects. So that will be the book. Could that also be your TV series? It is. You just oh, read my is. mind. <laughs> <laughs> Tell read me what mind. that is. So we, we dream to, we have a pilot on Rembrandt. Uh, it's called Rembrandt's Keys. Which keys? Keys? Rembrandt's <laughs> Keys. So you finally get a key to open a new meaning, a new layer in Rembrandt's and art. And that is so, that is so au courant because... People are being displaced from their houses, immigrants, and they hang on to that key to their house because they think one day they're going to come back and they need that key. And you have two kinds of doors. You have a door to your house and then you have a spiritual door. Yeah. So that really, that's really important. Mm -hmm. We have to leave, but I want you to show us this fabulous palette. This has belonged <laughs> to my uh, aunt. Uh, she was an artist, a beautiful art historian, who actually uh, was the only Russian art historian to ever interview Andrew Wythe in America. Is that right? Did you ever use this palette? And this was her palette, and she passed away when I was four. Ooh. I found this palette when I was around 10 when I made this drawing and she taught me without being there how to make how to paint with oils she... because her palette was laid out I knew that the whites was here and the darks were here the warms were here and the cools were here and, this. and that and I the... have to put something in there right. and I figured out because there was two right. bottles and that's how I made my first painting but in the middle of this palette I added a painting of my eye and this is the artist looking through the the palette. This is so creation. great. I'm so glad you came today, it's Jean. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. And we'll be right back with actress Sharon Sharth. Hi, I'm Joan Quinn, and welcome back to the Joan Quinn Profiles. We're taping here at the Hollywood Museum, and I'm with actress, playwright Sharon Sharth, who was born and raised near Buffalo, New York. She has a Bachelor of Fine Arts in Musical Theater from SUNY. She studied at Actor Studio and Circle Rep Theater. She's a member of the Dramatist Guild of America, PEN, and the Female Playwrights Initiative. I think that's very cool <laughs> in LA. You've seen her on stages across the US, in film and on TV. Sharon's also an award-winning author. Playwright? Oh, author, yes. Playwright. Playwright, Playwright and too, author. and author, <laughs> author of children's books, because you've written young adult fiction. No, not young adult, M younger. younger. Younger than that? Yep. Uh, probably, I mean, it's wide scan from like 
6 to 10, oh. 6 to 12. It's, but a it's, lot of books. Yes. What kind of stories? Well, they're, they're, they're nonfiction. They're, um, they're all nonfiction? They're nonfiction. See, I, can I tell you how this happened? Yes, Why I started? Okay, because <laughs> because I'm like... not a writer. I mean, my, my parents were both journalists. My oh. brother is now a television journalist. So journalism and writing is in my family. So are they Scharf? No, they're Schlerth. They're Schlerth. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anyway. So let's so, start there. Okay, so, um, all right. So I was an actor in New York, right? And uh, I was doing all these plays. Circle Repertory Theater Company, with, where Lanford Wilson came from, and right. Marshall Mason, right. and, you know. And um, did you work with all those people? Oh, yes, yes. Yeah. We did great stuff. I mean, I was a, one of the leading actresses there for 10 years. In so the that 80s. was a great experience, yes, right? Yes. It's really where I learned, where I learned to act. And, um, and I was also doing the actor's, I was in the actor's studio at that time. Uh, anyway, but I started losing, for instance, um, Burn This, the uh, oh, Lanford yeah, Wilson's play. Right. Okay, so I was the one who worked on that part. So that part is me, a lot of it. You mean while he was writing it? Well, yes, we worked together up in Vermont. We, you know, just had lots of readings and worked over the years. And then when they did it, um, you know, he cast Joan Allen and John Malkovich from Chicago, right, from Steppenwolf. So, uh, so I didn't get to do it, but they took pictures of my hair. Be my hair is really very curly, and she has very curly hair in the show. <laughs> and they had pictures of my hair all over her dressing room to make a wig <laughs> of my hair for her. Anyway, but Was I got that to a very point. Upsetting? <laughs> I didn't know about it until it had already opened, and then I went backstage and went, that's um, me, <laughs> you oh know. And I also didn't realize that it was so much me in the part. Because, because you had written it. Well, because. Or co-written it. Uh, no, well, I didn't really write it, but I, he just took me. Inspired. My husband and I went to see the Burn This at the Mark Taper Forum recently. I don't know, two or three years yeah, ago? Yeah, I saw it then. And, right. uh, and it was a very different production, but my husband turned to me. He didn't know me at the time. He turned to me and he said, that is so you. And I said, really? <laughs> yeah, but but yeah. he didn't know that, that you had gone through no. that period? No, oh, that's very no. interesting. So it really was. Yeah. But you started in musical theater. Well, that was it, more dramatic, wasn't it? Well, I did that mostly in college. You know, oh, that was musical theater. Yeah, musical theater in uh, in that was my schooling. It was all about music. Why and were you doing musical theater? Because were you I go on was a singer. Because oh. I really had I have a, a how do I say this? You're a singer. <laughs> I have a great voice. You have a great voice. Uh, it's a very strong voice, but it's it, but um, it's not what I wanted to do. I wanted um, to act. But when I, le I left New York, because I lost the plays <laughs> to people who had names. So I said, all right, fine, I'm, I'm going to L.A., I'm going to go get a name. And I came out to L.A., <laughs> and the first thing that happened to me, the first audition I had was for a play down at the Old Globe Theater in San Diego doing Lost Highway by Mark Harlick. And we were doing the play, and I played... Um, Hank Williams' wife, Audrey, who can sing. Oh, the Lost Highway, right? Yes, right, yes, right. and she's always a little off key. So, uh, about two weeks into the show, I turn toward, I'm on stage about to sing my first song, and I turn toward Mark, and he goes and knocks my <gasps> jaw across my face. And you mean just by, by mistake, accident? Totally by mistake. I don't know what he was doing, and I don't know how my face got in there, but it went across my face, and it felt like a uh, you know the uh, oh, you know uh, oh typewriter typewriter. <laughs> it's that's what it felt like, and I thought it was way over here. Oh, so I, your jaw was way over there. I thought my jaw was way over here, and you know, we're in the beginning of the play. So um, I had to sing my first song. I couldn't leave the stage, so I sang the song, and I couldn't open my mouth. But I sang like this, and she was a bad singer, so it didn't matter. So, so and this was on stage. On stage, yes. And uh, anyway, so um, oh. so. <laughs> I got off stage right after the song, and it didn't look as bad as it felt. So 
Uh, I finished the show, and luckily it was a Sunday night, so I put ice on my face, drove back up to L.A., and every Monday at my day off, I would go to a chiropractor who would fix it. <laughs> and How terrible. I had to have braces. I mean, I finished the run of the show and, and just was on Advil. And that <laughs> was your time. first time here. That was I mean, my first, first job in Los Angeles. Wow. And the doctor said, Sharon, get another job. You another career. You can't do this anymore. Because but that was such an accident. Oh, but you it couldn't was, sing. But though. I could. Well, like, not only could <coughs> I not sing, but they didn't want me to do anything. They said, you know, this could freeze into place. It could, you know. So. So you've written so this waiting I for grace. Writing. Yes. So you wrote waiting for grace. Is it about that? No. Oh no. <laughs> no, waiting for grace is about a woman who wants to get married. I spent years wanting to get married so so after you were on stage yes then you were spending hit. years and then <laughs> i so i i i decided to leave the business and i started writing children's books oh that's what Did happened the children's you left books. the stage that's right and but here completely. but here you you'd acted in mcnally's plays and Ackborn's plays yes and you left I because left. those are great playwrights. Yes, of course. With celebrated good roles and yes. celebrated actors. Yes, yes, and you know gr a great theater in Los in uh, New York. <laughs> but uh, but I quit because they wanted to. They told me to. The doctors did, and I thought, well, okay, I guess I will do something else. So I started writing. Oh, so that's why you've written so many books because yes. there was so much time. That's right. But they're not novels. No. They're not. They're but are they teach? Are they educational? They're kind about of books? animals mostly. They're about. Oh. I have this thing about animals, and so I, you know, they're mostly about animals. They're about, all different kinds. But of But one thing, and I, ugh, it's a teen suicide. Yes, that is a young adult novel. Yes. that's what yes. I. But that's and a that novel. And that did win an award. How yes, could you? And that's the award-winning yes. novel. But yes. how do yes. you make it into a novel? I mean, did you did you pull from real situations? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I you know I've had a lot of uh, you know depression working through all that myself. And so and then. it started in high school. So I really wrote about my experience. Wow, that was really heavy duty. Yeah. But it must have been so strong that it won awards, yeah, right? Yeah. Okay, so then, so then back to new comedy. Now let's get to comedy, <laughs> right? Let's get yes, to waiting yes. for Grace because well, um, okay. So then she uh, had you had awards in New York for her for this play. Wait, no, not yet. Oh, not not yet. yet. I hadn't started writing the play. I was out of the business. Yeah, so, right. Okay. So I so but then I started writing this thing that was a play. Okay. And I started doing readings and getting my circle rep people to and other you know so many actors and they all did the readings for me and yeah you had great people reading for you didn't yeah, you yeah Adam Arkin and uh, Brian Kerwin and yeah we had some amazing people. Um, but and, and Gregory Harrison, right? Uh, Gregory was supposed to do the play, but he he uh, got oh, a here? film. Yes, um, he got a, isn't that the way you cast I him, and then it. they get I a film? It. And what can you do? I know, yeah, nothing. But uh, <laughs> but while I was writing, I I actually before I started writing, before I got hit in the face, I had been with someone who I thought I was going to marry. We'd been together for seven years, um. and uh, and all of a sudden he didn't want to marry me. And so I left him and was out there in the world, my mid-30s, and wanted children desperately. And so I got out of the business, started writing uh, children's writing books instead. Children's <laughs> books, yes. And dating, trying to date with braces. Cause my, <laughs> oh, you I was still, still trying to put my job back. But then... <laughs> Uh, then I, so I was dating, and that's what this play is about. This play is about, I was a woman who, I wanted a family. I wanted a husband. I wanted children. And I didn't know how to make it happen. I couldn't make it happen. So you wrote this story. You're the star of it, right? Yes. You're starring in it. Yes. And it's at uh, what theater? The Odyssey. Oh, it's at the, the Odyssey, Odyssey which is great. Yes. And is there a cast? Sure. Uh, there, Pamela Dunlap from Mad Men, Lily Knight, who's, mm, let's see, what's the latest thing? American Crime. She's done a lot Everything, of Everything, right, yeah. yeah. Uh, Todd Babcock, um, Jeffrey Lebeau, and uh, Chris Penrock. So did you help cast it? 
since yes. you wrote it? Yes. But even though you're, but you didn't direct it. No, no. no so no, who's sorry. directing Lee it? Costello. Oh, Lee, it's a woman, it's right? It's a woman. Yes. And so she ha she knows the situation. Yes, yeah, she knows all the guys. In the she play. knows the guys. Yeah. You mean she's been through those kind yeah. of guys? Well, no, she knows my guys. <laughs> but she knows I've known those... her since Circle Rep. Oh, she actually knows yeah, them. Oh, knows I them. see. But yeah. she also knows the story. Yes. She she can do it from a woman's point That's of view. Right. That's right. That's yeah. why I was asking if, yeah. if it was a woman director. Yes. And and did you have anything to do with the directing? I mean, you're the star, so what do you do? Oh, well, it's a really good question um, because it's a lot of like me explaining. Well, as the playwright, here's what I mean. Right. You know, and explaining things that seem to go mean this, but what I really mean is this. And you know, it's 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 complicated. It is complicated. It is. And, and do you still live in New York? No, no, I live, live here all the time now. You yeah, live here. Because I got married. So is that a happy <laughs> ending? To, wait, is Grace the, the I can't state tell of you Grace? That. Is, is Grace the state of Grace? Uh, no. Oh, it's not the state well, of no, Grace? Well, no, it is. It is. <laughs> but, but really, it's about, it's, it's, it's this woman who doesn't know, how do you do this? How do you do this life thing? How do you have a relationship? How do you do? How do you do that? How so do you, do you teach us? <laughs> do you teach us how to do it? I just tell you my experience. <laughs> I tell you my experience, and then, uh, and I'm not going to say if this is the guy uh, in the play. In the play, but um, because you don't know what's going to really happen in the play, but but I have a very happy marriage now. <laughs> and are you still writing children's books? No, no, no. Are you writing now more I'm back plays? Now I'm acting. Oh, you're acting. Yes, are I'm you acting writing again. more plays? Are you writing for uh, yourself? Yes, yes, I am. And I you am. have so many people in, in, in the uh, business. Have you picked any of them out to write plays for? Well, Judd Hirsch has asked me to write him a play. Um, mm, I haven't that's done what that I wondered, yet. yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I don't think anybody else has asked me yet. But, but but do you have anyone in mind that when you write something that you're? Oh sure, oh yeah, yeah. But I have to say, most not really actors, mostly people from my life. And so then, that's what they always teach you, right? Yeah, yeah write about what, about what you, know. you know. So and you did. I did with uh, waiting for grace. Right. So we're happy you were with us today. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Sharon. So nice to be here. And thank you for watching. Keep writing to J-A-Q-U-I-N-N-1 at AOL.com and see you next time.